Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage, the Vault Series. Today's interview is one of the earliest ones that I did with guitarist Kenny Lovelace. Kenny talks about his career with the killer Jerry Lee Lewis and all the fun that he had with Jerry on the road. Maybe not so much fun sometimes. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Once again, guitarist Kenny Lovelace. So anyway, one one day this young girl came in and she uh, she wanted to uh, uh, ask Johnny Johnson, the club owner, said you know said she'd like to sing on the weekends, you know she could, you know she was kind of young, she'd been singing a good bit, you know, but she just wanted a place to work on the weekends. She came up there and there's Linda Gale, Jerry's sister. So uh, so she Jerry Lee Lewis, Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. yeah. So uh, Linda Gale came in, and uh, they, their, their home was only 80 miles from, from uh, Monroe, say, in Fairday. So she came in, and, uh, of course, we we had, had to back her up, say, on, on her ten. She'd come on first, we'd back her up, and then we'd do our show. And then uh, and, and we did that for a while, and she told Jerry about this band she was working with. She told Jerry, said, man, I'm working with a great band. So you, you need to see these boys, you know. So she told Jerry about it, and he was booked in Monroe. One night, at a, and his show was later on that night, mm -hmm. and she got him to come out to see our show, and uh, him and his road manager Cecil Harrelson, and uh, they came out, and of course, I mean, we saw, we couldn't believe Jerry's coming out to see us, you know, so we're sitting there on the, he's sitting on the front row, here we come out, and Linda came out and did her show, we backed her up, and she did a good job, so we 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 tore out here, we went with our show, you know. All of a sudden, we did our did our bit. We do the group singing and all this kind of stuff. And then we went into the banjo act, and uh, and then I played the fiddle and I played the mandolin. And Jerry kept looking around. He he told me later. He said if he's gonna get on the piano. I was gonna really get it mad. <laughs> 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 but he was kidding, you know. Yeah. But anyway, he he loved the band. He really liked, it, and he wanted to hire the whole band. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that time, the guys were had the children was, uh, you know, didn't really, could travel at that point, you know. And he said, well, I tell you, Kenny, I, tell, and I talked to the guys, and I, he said, if the other guys can't make it, so I sure would like to have you, Kenny, you know. And I talked with the other guys, and you know, because I hate to break up the band, you know, but they said they weren't going to be traveling much more anyway. So, mm -hmm. And so they said they encouraged me to go ahead, and Jerry offered me that job, and that's the first part of 67 now. I've been with him ever since and been all over the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that, that's kind of the way it happened, mm -hmm. you know, uh, getting in to meet Jerry. What was the first thing you recorded with Jerry Lee? First thing I, record, I recorded with Jerry was uh, at uh, Columbia Records. It was right there where Mercury, you know, it used to be the old studio of Columbia. Mm -hmm. There, and uh, we, we, we recorded in there, and it was, uh, uh, I played guitar on that. What, what year was that? Uh, it was uh, 68. First part of 68. And did you um, did you ever work or do any recording with the other artists besides Jerry? Other, no, after no, that? Or he's, uh, well, it, pretty much I stayed with him stayed with all the time because he was doing, you know, he, 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 and what happened after that, uh, that session there, it was kind of a rock and roll session, you know. Uh, and and he, uh, he was on Mercury. Mm -hmm. Then you know, "Soul My Way" was the name of it, mm -hmm. the album. So uh, we, I did that, and played guitar on it, and uh, after that, this the guy uh, Eddie Kilroy came up with a uh, a song, a country song called "Another Place, Another Time." And he said, "Jerry, you need to cut country," you know. And then, uh, of course, uh, and uh, and Jerry Kennedy was producing mm -hmm. Jerry Lee, so uh, Eddie. Took the you know with he you know, got with Jerry Kennedy on it and they talked it over and said well, maybe this be a change because Jerry you know it wasn't at that point wasn't you know one thing the Beatles is right. is out you know and all that stuff was going on and so uh, he was kind of da down at that point a little bit I mean it, and uh, so I think it's time to change you know. So he was just, he was staying booked live but he, oh, oh, but, yeah. but he just wasn't getting the radio play. Yeah, he wasn't getting the radio play because mm -hmm. they. Uh, but I mean, he, oh, he was still working mm -hmm. and, and doing uh, public appearances and selling out, you know. So anyway, we recorded that song, and I played fiddle. Mm -hmm. 
and another place, another time. It's the first song Jerry ever had a fiddle on, mm -hmm. and it went to number one. And then he started string of country hits after that. And I played fiddle and guitar on all of his stuff. I made a fiddle on a lot of it and some guitar, but uh, mostly I played two, both of them, you know, some, you know. What made Milwaukee famous? Yes, made a loser out of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was Glenn Sutton. Glenn Sutton. Yeah, I remember Glenn. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, she still comes around to love what's left of me. And uh, uh, let's see. Chantilly Lace. Really? Yeah, he cut Chantilly Lace. Was that was he it? Bobby McGee. Mm hmm And he did Bobby McGee after... Janice did it. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I remember, I remember back uh, then. Then he was on Mercury, and one day was was over there. Jerry Kennedy, uh, he brought us in for a session. You know, Jerry Lee and I was with him, and we're sitting on that little old Mercury had a little old office over there on Sixteenth. Mm -hmm. And Jerry Kennedy was in there. We we got there, and Jerry uh, Jerry Kennedy told Jerry said, "I've got this songwriter that really got a good song. I think he's gonna like." You know, and back then he didn't do no uh, demos or nothing, you know. I mean, most of the time they'd come out, mm -hmm. come out and sing it for mm -hmm. you. And so we was waiting and said this for the songwriter to come out and we kept waiting around a little bit in there, you know. All of a sudden, here this here this guy walks across the field out there coming in the Mercury Record, had his guitar with him, Chris Christopherson. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. And Chris had this song, uh, Once More With Feeling. He sung it for Jerry. Jerry said, that's, that's, that's my song, man. He cut it, and it was number one record. When did you start touring heavy with, with Jerry Lee? When I first went with him. Because he, at that time, Jerry was, uh, he was working. You know, he had that mishap thing in England where he'd married his 13-year-old mm -hmm. cousin, you know. And so, I mean, uh, they just crucified him, tried to, you know. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, he said, uh, you know, he told me, he said, no, no, he went, a whole lot of shaking and all that stuff was out. And, you know, I mean, he was touring over there, and I mean, big. And then all that come up, and boy, that press hit. And uh, so anyway, he said, uh, yeah, he, he was making $10,000 a night then. Mm -hmm. and then he, they, they knocked him when he made him leave and come back here because it, it hit all over the world, you know. He went from 10000 a night to five, $600 a night. But he said, I shall return. He told him, he said, I'm like MacArthur, I shall return. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he did. He mm -hmm. kind of, he's big, big over there now. But I mean, it, but he he fought it on the road and, and I went with him at at one of those, that kind of that low point. But I mean, he never quit working. He worked, we worked uh, probably, we'd work a tour like 25 days out of the month. And then uh, we'd, I remember we'd work, we'd, uh, Work on the road like that out in Texas, you know. We'd go do two shows a night. Jared would uh, come back to the hotel, and uh, the guy was looking after Jerry, Dick West, and he had also had his road manager, Cecil Harrelson, and myself. We we rode in the 16, uh, 66 black limousine, the four of us. Mm -hmm. We'd take turns about driving. Jerry'd sit in the back seat and smoke his pipe. And, uh, but anyway, he, after the show, he'd come back, and Dick would go get him a hamburger and two glasses of milk, some chili. So he'd eat that and he'd go to bed and get some rest and we'd get up the next morning. But uh, he, he didn't want to leave. He was watching a soap opera. He was watching part of a soap opera. He said, as soon as this is over, we'll leave. <laughs> we'd get that limo to head out again, man. Did you uh, ever hang with Elvis much? We, uh, I got to meet Elvis one time. And... Uh, it's a pretty good story here. He, he, uh, we we were we were on the road, and uh, uh, was actually was worked all up through Ohio up in there. And we stopped at Columbus, Ohio. It was going to be off about three days, and and that was 1970. And uh, so we was at the hotel, and and Elvis is in, in, at uh, International in Las Vegas, and so he 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 run Jerry down, got a hold of him. And found out where he was, got his hotel number. He called up Jerry. And, uh, and so, uh, Jerry was uh, asleep, so he left a message. 
And uh, when uh, Jerry uh, woke up, well, he got Elvis's message. So then he called at the hotel for Elvis, and Elvis was in the sauna. So he left a message. <laughs> so then, then when Elvis called him back, though, he said, Jerry Lee said, I, I would really love for you to come out and catch my show and tell me what you think. Because that's when he's coming back into doing his live right. shows mm-hmm. after doing the movies. You right. Know? And so anyway, Jerry finally got a hold of Elvis, and Elvis said, I'll set it up for y'all to come out. And so Jerry's uh, road manager, Cecil Harrelson, Dick West, and myself got to go on that trip, you know, just to go. We flew out there from Columbus, Ohio, the International, and Elvis had rooms. I mean, he set up rooms and everything for us, and and we just uh, uh, got checked in and everything and uh, touched base with Elvis and said, I got you a ring the side seats down there in this big booth, you know, and so we we got all dressed and showered and went down and seen the show and was sit, sitting there in the booth and, uh, you know, getting ready for the show to start. And, and uh, so, man, they, they introduced Elvis and here he come, man, he come out. He looked great. I mean, he was, he was, you know, like he was then, he slim and trim and, you know, he was just a great looking guy, you know. And so he came out and Started doing his show about middle way through his show, and he said, "Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a friend of mine here. I, I want you to, I want to recognize tonight. Said he come out here to see my show tonight, and I really appreciate him coming out. Said I want y'all to give a great big warm welcome for Mr. Jerry Lee Lewis, my friend. And he stood. Everybody stood up in the whole place, and and Jerry just uh, stood up and took a bow and thanked Elvis and." And uh, I mean, and but and it was just great. And Elvis done a great show, man. And that's you know, there was always that, you know, kind of a rumor about you know the jealousy or competition or whatever. I'm sure there was some competition there. Yeah. But nevertheless, that's that's, that's pretty. Yeah, they were they they were in competition with each other, but they respected each other, mm-hmm. you know. And after the show, Elvis had us to come back to the dressing room. We went back to the dressing room. Here was. Uh, yeah, it was the first time I ever met him. I mean, I'd seen him, you know, mm-hmm. on TV and stuff. But I went and I shook hands with him and told him it was really nice to meet him and really appreciated, loved your show. And and he said, well, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. And, of course, him and Jerry was talking. There was Vernon over there and James was in there. Yeah, I was about to mention. James was there. I mean, he was talking. And and uh, and uh, Colonel Parker was there. And see, James told me that he didn't he didn't even really meet Elvis until Elvis called him to play for him. Is that right? And that was in '69. Yeah, yeah, that, that's probably true. I I, I didn't know, but uh, I think James stayed with him about nine years, didn't? Still, he does. And, and Elvis was so nice. I mean, he and and he had a piano in his dressing room, and it was an upright where you could sit up, and lean your arm on it. Mm-hmm. He said, "Jerry, would you mind just getting over there and just play me a couple of tunes?" Mm-hmm. And Jerry said, oh, golly, I, was, I don't know. Uh, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I, said, I, I really wish you'd just play me a couple of teams, just whatever you want to play, you know. So Jerry sat down at the piano, and here was Elvis sitting down there just looking at it. Mm-hmm. And, no, I didn't have a camera one with me. Mm-hmm. What a picture, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. That would have been a great picture. That would have been it, one of those <clears throat> one of those moments. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But anyway, uh it it uh, Jerry played him a couple of teams. Do you remember what he played? He played uh, uh, a one gospel team, Ice Railway to Heaven, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then he played a little boogie woogie thing, mm-hmm. and you know, and and Elvis was just grinning, you know, and, and Jerry was just playing away, and so anyway, it was all over here. Elvis, that was between the first and second show, it was backstage. So we went back out, and. Uh, and caught the second show. And, uh, of course, we didn't go back because Elvis was tired. You know? yeah. and then, but he thanked Jerry again for coming out, and we told him bye after the, after when we were left the dressing room. Told him to, man, he just, and Jerry said, well, hey, man, said, you, you got it, don't you? Hey, you got to worry about nothing. <laughs> so, uh, and then they, you know, they hugged each other's neck. And we left out, and then, you know, I, I never got to meet Elvis in person again. Did you ever meet any of the any of the Beatles? I uh, met uh, George Harrison, and uh, how that how that come about? Uh, oh, George was uh, I met him at uh, 
Carl Perkins his funeral. Oh. But uh, I met John Lennon at uh, L.A. He came to see our show. Oh, really? Him and Yoko Look at, at the Roxy Theater. And uh, so uh, it's uh, it's right on Sunset Boulevard. Mm-hmm. So we we got up there and we was on the stage and and John and Yoko was in, they had this little balcony right up over the stage, you know the little things you kind of mm-hmm. hang over yeah. and you see, yeah, little booth type things, you know, little booth they have up there. Mm-hmm. And so John and Yoko was up there, and man, he was just uh, eating the show up, with Jerry Lee, you know, and. And when uh, Jerry went into a whole lot of shaking, mm-hmm. he's hollering, "Go Jerry, go Jerry, <laughs> go Jerry!" And he just hollered all through the show, "Go Jerry!" And then after the show, he went back and wanted to meet Jerry in person. You know, he went back and and he uh, he got down and he said he thought a whole lot of shaking was the most perfect record he ever heard. And he got down and kissed Jerry's feet. I mean, just kissed his shoes. John did. I mean, he, he just really loved Jerry, you know. I mean, he loved his music and he loved him as a person, you know. And John, he, he was just a really nice guy, you know. I, n- I never met Paul or uh, I did meet Ringo one time, just briefly in Memphis. But going back to where I was traveling on that 66 black limousine, mm-hmm. we played like maybe 25 days out of that month. And then the last day of the the last show we'd do, we'd come out of the club, four of us, we'd load up in the 66 black limousine. I'd, I'd already pulled my shift driving, so Jerry would want me to do that, so he'd want me and him to get in the back seat, and he'd get a flat top, and I'd get my fiddle, and we'd play probably from Ohio all the way into Memphis in the back seat, mm-hmm. just playing tunes. And we'd do that a lot of times. But Jerry loved to do that. He, he loved just he loved to play, and he'd come off the... And also, when he'd get into Memphis sometime, he'd get in, he'd go to a nightclub, you know, He'd sit there for about, if they had a piano up there, he'd, he'd be sitting in the audience for about five minutes. He'd be on stage playing that piano. I know, isn't that a treat? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he just loved to, he just loved to play. Sam Phillips, you got any, any stories with Sam? Um, Did you get to hang with him a good bit? Uh, uh, you know, Sam's my second cousin. No, I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sure is. So give me some, some Sam-isms. Sam-isms? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Sam, uh, yeah, I didn't get to see a lot of Sam in, uh, uh, back at that time because he was so busy with, with the artists and stuff, you know. And, uh, and then I, I would be on with Jerry, and uh, of course Jerry done had a whole lot of shaking great balls of fire and stuff out. And, and then Sam, right after that, you know, he sold Son to RCA. Well, he sold Elvis. Yeah, sold, sold Elvis, Elvis yeah. to RCA. He sold... Um Son to Shelby Singleton. Yeah, Shelby Singleton. So Shelby got all that stuff, and then he released a lot of that back stuff, you know, in Europe and the states and stuff, you know. But Sam was, uh, Sam was a smart guy, you know. I mean, he he was really really clever. I went to his funeral, and and I, I and he's the last two or three years he came to Jerry's birthday party, and he's a great speaker. I, I was lucky enough to meet him myself, and yeah. I, I've got a, a picture of, of my mentor, Billy Sherrill, and me and Sam together. Really? Uh-huh. And oh, that's it, great. And, um, of course, Billy used to work, you know, for Sam. Right. And um, Sam used to come up to Billy's office when he was in Nashville, up at CBS, and um, he was something else. Oh, yeah, he was, man. I, I tell you, he he could get up and make a speech in a minute. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. Talk about, and I mean things. a good one. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it was almost like Moses giving a speech or something. And he looked like that with a yeah, beard, with that beard and, and stuff on. Yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, Sam was a, a smart guy, and he was a good guy too. And I, I hate to lose him. I hate to lost Judd too. Judd passed away about six years ago, and Sam was last year. I saw him at the Hard Rock here in Nashville, mm-hmm. and he was speaking. I forgot what it was for, though. I think um, DJ was there, and Scotty. It was. Mm-hmm. It was been a few years ago. I forgot right. what it was, but that was. It was very entertaining to see him. I mean, really, he he could have been an evangelist. Oh, absolutely! I mean, yeah, he, he probably been the biggest one of all. You know? Yeah, him and Jerry used to. 
get together and talk, you know, and it, and uh, it's been, you know, of course, when they did that million court, million dollar quartet mm-hmm. thing, you know, standing there, of course, Sam had the tapes rolling, you know, <clears throat> recorded all that stuff. And it was great to hear him talking. And so what are we going to sing next, you know? <laughs> What's the sing. biggest crowd you've ever played for? About 90,000 people in France. 90,000? Yeah. That's I've huge. never seen so many people in my days. It was an outside concert, and I, I couldn't believe it, man. I, now, can you imagine, though, that, that's maybe, that's less than a fourth of Woodstock, even? Yeah. Can you, I can't only imagine that I can't what even that imagine like, that. Huh? I, Woodstock was something else, wasn't it? Unbelievable. So, okay, um, mm-hmm. in the 50s and 60s, 70s even, had all these great, Variety shows, you know, we had, you had Ed Sullivan, yeah. Hollywood Palace, uh, Glenn Campbell, Good Time Hours, yeah. Sonny and Cher. Yeah. Um, what are those shows, if any, did you did you play on? I played on uh, Glenn Campbell. Played on Ed Sullivan. Uh, what was that like? Because yeah, those shows, I mean, Ed Sullivan, that was hot shows back then. I mean, everybody just couldn't wait till it come on, you know. Um. You did the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour? Yeah. And and how, what was that like? And that, that was filmed in L.A.? Yeah, filmed in L.A. Remember what y'all played? A whole lot of shaking. Yeah. Great balls of fire. Glenn was uh, real nice. He he had a good show back then. I loved it. I did, too. Uh, he, he and Glenn's a good, uh, he's a good musician. Uh, actually, the very first piece of um, memorabilia that we were right. was given to us was um, an old ovation. I didn't even saw an ovation amplifier before, but but no. it's a, it's it's got the Glenn Campbell show stenciled on it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So that was that was actually the first thing that anybody knowingly donated to the to the museum was that was that amplifier, <laughs> which actually is sitting up here in the front window. I, I seen that when I first came yeah. in. Mm-hmm. I said, "It is an ovation." But Glenn played ovation. For Guitars, for sure. Yeah, I mean, when you say right. ovation. You think of Glenn. You think of Glenn, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure do. He's a good picker, boy. Yeah, we did, uh, also did, uh, they did a salute show, uh, Dick Clark did with Jerry out in L.A. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had uh, Gene Autry, Keith Richards, Little Richard. Mm-hmm. And Gene Autry was a good uh, friend of Jerry's. And Jerry loved Gene Autry. And he, he did, uh, on that show, Jerry did Mex- uh, show Gene riding a champ, doing Mexicala Road, mm-hmm. his style, you know. And Jerry showed Jerry doing his uh, Mexicala Rose in the rock and roll style. Mm-hmm. And they just switched back from one to the other. It was mm-hmm. great. Uh, Johnny Carson? Did you do Johnny Carson? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and did Johnny Carson and... Uh, but then the night we did it, well, Johnny had took a break. I think he was in Vegas or something, uh-huh. and uh, Jay Leno was setting in for him. Uh-huh. And so uh, we we got to do the show though, and it was really good. And of course, we went back and done Jay's since he's been there. We've done it a couple of times. Did y'all do Letterman? Didn't uh, didn't do Letterman. We did uh, Tom Snyder. Tom Snyder before Letterman, uh, David went in. I think Tom Snyder was one of the best interviewers. Ever. Yeah, yeah. He he did a good interview with Jerry on his show. I mean, he and he really liked Jerry, and he, we did good on his show, and and he uh, he really respected Jerry. You probably feel like you're a better guitar player now or fiddle player than you were twenty years ago. Yeah, I, I, it seemed like you learn something new, and and you get more polished as you go along. I, I can feel that, you know. I mean, like I can do different licks and I I just hear a, a lick in my head that I wouldn't have heard 20 years ago mm-hmm. you know but I mean I just uh, I really love music it's, it's been my life 